The arrival of Generation 8 and Pokemon Sword and Shield brought us a brand new region to explore. The Gala region, based off of Great Britain, has so many different locations for trainers and their Pokemon to adventure to and explore in this amazing experience. And since it's been around a year since the release of Sword and Shield, we've also gotten DLC, which have given us brand new locations that weren't even in the original base game. Today, uh, as a bit of a wrap up to 2020, we're nearing the end of the year, I wanted to discuss some of my favorite locations from Pokemon Sword and Shield, whether it's towns and cities or routes and different locations added in the DLC. This region, the Galar region, has just so many amazing locations that I felt we should talk about them and discuss what were the best parts of them and what were parts that could have been done better. With that being said, let's jump straight into the video. The first location that we're going to be talking about for this list is Wedgehurst. Wedgehurst is the second town you visit on your journey through the Galar region, just north of your hometown of Postwick. One of the things I love about this game is that a lot of the towns are incredibly British sounding. Wedgehurst and Postwick start you off with that very well. Wedgehurst, on top of it having just an absolutely phenomenal soundtrack, it's one of the the motifs that you hear in Wedgehurst are the same motifs in the music that you hear in a lot of different locations in most of the Gala region. And I think that the music team for these games did an incredible job displaying that and putting that on full for this starting town. One of the parts that's great about this town is that you get the introduction of Leon here. You get to see him coming off the train station and being greeted by adoring fans while you're with Hop. And I think that that's one of the things that Wedgehurst sets up really well for the game. He's talking about how the champion of this region, Pokemon Battles, the Pokemon League here, is incredibly popular. It's like soccer in Great Britain and Europe. It is deeply entrenched in the in the culture of the region. And while gym battles and the Pokemon League and being a trainer are major parts of every single region, except maybe the Alola region, because that's a little bit different. They did a really good job in Galar of really putting that on full display, and they did so in a way that they made pretty much the entire story centered around the League as well. And while I would have done something a little bit different, and I would have done something different with the Evil Team, I think that for what they were trying to hit on, the fact that they were trying to emphasize the League as this incredibly important piece of the puzzle for understanding the culture and the society of Galar, I think it sets it up really well, and I think Wedgehurst is a great starting town for that purpose. Now, of course, starting towns are never really much to write home about. Wedgehurst is the sand gem town of the Gala region, but it's really gorgeous. It's laid out really well. It's on a bit of an incline, and the town itself is just great. It, the train gives you access to the DLC areas in the future, so Wedgehurst overall is a really well-utilized town with a lot of really good story elements, a kick-ass soundtrack, and you get the introduction of the professor here. So overall, it is a fantastic starting town for the Galar region, and it is my number five on this list. For the most part, this list is utterly dominated by towns and cities in large locations. So I wanted to dedicate number four on this list to a place that I don't think gets enough appreciation, and that are the two Galar mines. Now, it's talked about a lot in the lore of the Galar region that Pokemon like Carcoal are used to heat the homes of people in ancient times when there wasn't as much of an access to fire, wasn't as much of an access to heat as there is in the modern era. And we see that on display as well in the mines. Carcoal are also also used as a functioning piece of everyday life for these workers. They carry coal throughout the mines, and it's really cool to see how the mines are in different locations in the Gala region, really supplying a lot of the work and a lot of the economy for these different areas. It's not hinted at very much, but the Pokemon games overall always do a really good job of showing their world building instead of specifically telling you, and I think that the Galar mines are a great piece to that. Another part is that they're just gorgeous. The mines are lit up with different colored gemstones, and the soundtrack is also really well done. You'll notice that for a lot of my my higher picks on this list, it is a lot about the soundtrack. The music of Pokemon is deeply important to me, and it's on full display in these Galar mines. If I had to pick a Galar mine as the one that I prefer, 
I think the Galar Mine number two is a little bit more underappreciated. It's in a point in the game where you're really pushing forward and attacking gyms, so the routes and different areas between towns aren't as emphasized as they are maybe when you get to the first Galar Mine. When you get to the first Galar Mine, you're experiencing really the first extensive route of the game. You're going between the starting town where the league match begins and where your first gym is. So there's a lot more to take in, and I think it has you spend a little more time in Galar Mine 1, but Galar Mine 2 is laid out really well. There's some cool story beats with it. It's right after you just it's right after you meet with Rose for one of the earlier times in the game. And overall, I just think it's done really well. So number four on this list are the Galar Mines. I would encourage all of you to go back and check those out because they are great locations for the Galar region. Coming in at number three is a town that honestly, I think might surprise some people, and it's Motostoke. When you're getting through the wild area for the first time and you're following Hop to the first city, this is the big location. This is one of the two, I would say, three central cities in the center parts of the Gala region from north to south. There's about three of them. Motostoke is amazing. It's one of the cities we saw a lot of in the trailer, so it wasn't really a big surprise, but it is a bustling city. There's so many different people and so many different Pokemon that you can see, some of which pop in at times and kind of ruins the immersion. But the soundtrack, as I've mentioned before, is fantastic. The Motostoke theme, as you can hear in the background right now, is brilliant. It has a mix of clangs and clashes that kind of sound like a steampunk city while also having that signature Galar motif that I mentioned before that you could also hear in Wedgehurst. It is a massive city with so many different levels of the city to explore with really cool steampunk elevator, uh, elevator like structures that move you from one level to the other. The presentation of this city is fantastic. Another thing that this city does really well is, again, put on the display of the Pokemon League in this region. There are massive banners in different parts of this city that show off Leon and his Charizard in battle, and it's just, it sets up everything really well. And obviously, it would set things up really well because this is the city where the league begins. This is where we're all brought out into the big stadium to be greeted by the crowd. And Leon and Chairman Rose introduce the Pokemon League to us and announce this season or however you might want to refer to it as of the Pokemon League. And it's just great. The animation in these cutscenes is also really good. It's where you're introduced to the collection of gym leaders in your version of the game for the first time. It's fantastic. There's a really good bit of story content for the legendaries on the boxes of the games as well in this. You learn about a little bit about the legendary heroes of the past and how they defeated the darkest day. And it sets up how you're going to know that eventually later on in the game, you're going to learn a little bit more about these Pokemon, this hero. And it's just everything is set up very well. There's a lot of introduction in this. And I know for some people, a lot of this introduction can come off as slow paced, very you're kind of grinding through all the story pieces in this one city, but they've set up the city really well to represent all of this. This is where you meet a couple of your antagonists and your rivals for the first time. This is where you're introduced to Team Yell and Marnie when you're in the hotel getting ready for the main event to begin. It's a very well established town, and I think it's something that some people criticize Game Freak for nowadays. The There's a lot of different nooks and crannies to explore. It's not linear. There's so many different locations behind buildings for you to explore. There's little side quests where you can help certain people accomplish certain tasks in this city. You're going to be spending a lot of time in Motostoke, and you're coming back to it because Ball Guy is here for the first time. There's a lot of great stuff. Motostoke is an A-plus city in Pokemon. It captures the feel of Galar really well, and it captures the League aesthetic of Galar really well. Coming in at number two on this list, the second best location, in my opinion, in the Gala region, is the wonderfully aesthetic town of Surchester. In the north of Galar, well, in the northeast of Galar, it gets pretty snowy. And Surchester is this beautiful, nestled town in the tundra of the mainland of Galar. Nestled between two different snow and ice routes, Sir Chester is home to the ice-type gym, at least in S.H.I.E.L.D., I believe. Um, it is fantastic. The music of Sir Chester is very different from the rest of Galar. Most of Galar's tracks are very upbeat. They're very full of energy, different instruments being played in them. Sir Chester's is very low-key, as are most of the snow tracks in Pokemon games. Sir Chester gives you another thing that I mentioned in one of these 
pieces of the countdown, and that is lore through visuals. A lot of the things that you learn about in Surchester is that it was built around a natural spring, a natural warm hot spring, a natural well, and you can see that there's this massive pool for Pokemon and people to keep warm in the center of town. Another thing that is great, and as I mentioned in some of my favorite Pokemon from Galar, is that we get a lot more Carcoal lore in this city. We learn a lot about how Carcoal are following around trainers to keep them warm. We see that with a trainer near the Pokemon Center that has a Carcoal following her. It is... A lot of really good stuff. There's a great boutique here. There's some really cool items that you can buy from this boutique in the city. And it connects to two really good snow routes. The one to the right of Sir Chester is one where you're going to be in the water. You're going to be encountering a lot of water ice Pokemon. It's just, it's a very well laid out town. It is a circular town where, with a lot of Galar, the theme seems to be that up the middle of any designed location, especially the region itself, you have the major pieces of that town, you have the hot spring near the southern center of the town, and then up to the top of the town, you have the gym itself. And it's really good that they still were able to incorporate the massive arenas that these gyms are into more of a smaller, more quiet town that Sir Chester is. Snow regions if you've been watching this channel for a while, or if you know me, you will know that snow regions are my favorite parts of Pokemon. That's why Sinnoh is my favorite region, very in much colder climate. And Galar is in a similar vein, and Sir Chester is a town that captures that beautifully. And as you'll see for my number one pick, it's a theme that continues. It might be a little bit of a cop-out, because this is a massive location, but it's the clear and obvious number one. It is, to me, the best part of Generation 8 so far, and that is the Crown Tundra. This massive expanse was released in the second wave of DLC this fall for Pokemon Sword and Shield. It introduces a new town, it introduces new wild areas, it introduces a new battle mechanic, new legendary Pokemon. Overall, it is the best part of Generation 8, and it is where hopefully Fingers crossed, Game Freak is looking to take Pokemon in the future in terms of their design philosophy and in terms of how they tell their stories. The Crown Tundra is a snowy location covered from head to toe in ice and snow, and it is glorious. The town of Freezington is the only little settlement in the, in the entire region of the Crown Tundra. I guess you could refer to it as a sub-region within Galar, it's to, the, it's to the south. I understand that the, the temperatures and the climate of Pokemon games don't really make a ton of sense, but just go with it. It's a very small, nestled community of people wrapped and surrounded in the old legends of the region. This is where you learn about Calyrex and his two steeds. The story is short, but it is it's very good. The region itself, this little area, is where you get to do Dy Dynamax adventure raids, where you can encounter shiny legendary Pokemon, where you can encounter different types of Pokemon to go through this uh, dungeon crawling experience with your friends. It is great. Also, just like with the Isle of Armor, Pokemon, all Pokemon, are following you, and the Crown Tundra adds in a ton of new Pokemon into Gen 8 that weren't previously there. Another great piece of the Crown Tundra, and I mentioned this in my review, I just, part of putting this number one is that I really wanted to talk more about the Crown Tundra. There's so many new legendary Pokemon. Two new Regis with a temple that makes you pick between the two of them. You get three new Galarian birds, forms of the original legendary bird trio from Gen 1. You get to encounter the legendary uh, Musketeers, the three Musketeers of Cobalion, Terekion, and Virizion. And if you get all three, you can encounter Keldeo, which is something that we've never gotten in a Pokemon game before. Overall, it is just an amazing experience. A lot of the character interactions that you get in the Crown Tundra are great. Peony is a great new character introduced, and he is most likely, I believe, I don't know if it's outright confirmed, he's Rose's brother. That's another good piece of lore to the Galar region, and gives us a little more insight into the relationships of the villains of the Galar region. If you didn't know Rose was a villain, I apologize, but this is already a very spoilery-filled video. It's great. You get some really good moments with Sonya, who is on her duty here in the Crown Tundra as a newly minted professor. There's so many good things. You get to talk with Hop and you get more interaction with Hop, which is something that they also did really well in the Isle of Armor. It's a great experience. It is fun. The Pokemon selection by Game Freak is very good. If I had one criticism of the DLC as a whole, and if I had a criticism of the Crown Tundra, is that I felt there was definitely more of an opportunity to introduce some more Galarian forms. They didn't really do that. 
we got new Galarian forms of Slowbro and Slowking, but besides the legendary Pokemon, we really didn't get any. And I think that's something that hopefully games that come out next year for Pokemon's 25th anniversary do bring us some new forms based on the region that they are being remade from. So it's just the Crown Tundra is the best piece of Pokemon Sword and Shield. It's the wild area done the best. It's open world Pokemon done the best. The town fits in perfectly with the open world aesthetic of the game. The characters are really well done. And overall, I hope, as I mentioned before, that this is the direction Game Freak moves in. And I think it bodes really well. That is going to do it for me in this video, everyone. I hope you all enjoyed. I hope you're all having a wonderful holiday season. If you didn't check out my previous video talking about how Nintendo is terrible, it'll be linked on the end card of this video. I hope you enjoyed my top five Pokemon locations in the Galar region. I'm going to be doing a couple more Pokemon videos before the year ends, talking about some of my expectations for next year. It's going to be a really fun time. I had a fall Pokemon video that I wanted to do. It never ended up happening. I feel like it's too late. That'll come. That'll come next fall. With that being said, if you're not subscribed to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Let me know down in the description. Uh, let me know down in the comments section if you disagree with my list or if you agree with my list. Are there any locations you'd swap out? And let's talk about Galar because it is a fantastic region. With that being said, I've been Linky and we will see you all in the next video. Peace out.